then he was only a servant for a period, which then in Philippians uh, 2, you see that Jesus, uh, though he was in very nature God, mm -hmm. he, was, he took the nature of a servant, mm -hmm. was found in human likeness, mm -hmm. humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Mm -hmm. He achieved that as a servant of God. And therefore, then, yeah. God has now exalted him to the highest place, given in the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth. Yeah. So now, I, I, what I love is, it's gone from the highest place, at the right hand of God, all powerful, immune from pain, to suffering the greatest pain and suffering, and humility, but now God's raised him back to the highest place. So it's still done for the glory of God the Father, it's, so at the name of Jesus, every tongue shall confess. But uh, it's done he for the glory yeah. that Jesus is Lord uh, for the out. glory of God the Father. You missed out that every every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah, and that's one of the names for God, to the glory of God the Father. It, it, it's not a name, but it's a title, yeah, and, it, title. Uh, and it's a title that even King David is addressed. You know, David by Bathsheba in First Kings chapter one, she addresses him as her Lord. Yeah, but, but Jesus is, is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So his and that's in Revelation. He's not just a Lord, he is Lord of Lords. In Revelation, in Revelation he's not seen as God, but he's seen as the Lamb of God. Well no, it's um so it's, um, he, he does receive worship not because he's God, but he receives worship because of him being the Lamb of God. You know that redeems Yeah, here we are. Uh, there was a great multitude of every people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Yeah. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne yeah. and to the Lamb. Yeah. But treated as being equal with God. So there's a distinction between God and the Lamb? Yeah, God the Father and Jesus the Lamb of God. Well, it just says God. And even in Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, it says that this is the revelation from God given to Jesus. So there is that distinction and that subordination in this that the revelation comes from God, which God reveals to Jesus and then Jesus in turn reveals to, um, to I think, John. But then, but then Jesus does say, I am the Alpha and the Omega, claiming the very, 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 very name of God. He, he says it. Uh, so these are like divine attributes that you were previously speak, you know, like the gift of the Holy Spirit is like kind, kindness, like patience, generosity. So these are all like godly or divine attributes. And so Jesus within the context of Revelation is God's first creation, first and last. No, not, not creation. So within that context. He, he, he was never created. He's um, always existed Is this the God. NIV by the way? Yes. So oh, Jesus yeah. is not created, always existed with God the Father in heaven. Well, and that's why Revelation, he's the Alpha, the Omega, before anything else came to be. Revelation 3.14 can be understood to mean that Jesus is the beginning of God's creation. The NIV translates it as the ruler of God's creation, but it can also be understood to mean the beginning of God's creation. Yeah, um, John, and John, John is quite clear that in John 1, Jesus, uh, he says Jesus is in the beginning of the word. He is with God in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Through him all things were made. So Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus isn't created by God. God creates through Jesus, who's the Word of God. Yes, yeah, so again you make the distinction between God creates and he does it through Jesus. So you don't call Jesus God, but you call Jesus as an actor, also as a passive agency well, no, his, of his, God's um, so, so creation. So God, God the Father speaks Jesus, the Word of God. Yeah. So, so the Father, and you're thinking in spiritual terms, God, God the Father, when He creates, He creates, J Jesus is the, the, word. the means of creation, so He's the yeah. Word of God. But you know, so, Jesus says, the words you hear are not mine, but the Father who sent me, He has yeah. given me a commandment of what I should say. Yeah. So that's in John chapter 12, yeah. so verse he always, 52. He always says, and even in John 7, Oh. So, so let me look at that oh, okay, first. Sure, so, sure. so everything that Jesus says is exactly what God the Father wants him to say. Yeah. And that's because he says the Father's in me and I'm in the Father. So he'll always say what is the Father's will. Because yeah. he and the Father are one. Because he says my teachings are not mine, 
but the one who sent me. And if you want to know whether I teach from myself or from God, then do the will of God and then you will know that my teachings are not my own, but the one who sent me. Yeah. But yeah, Jesus, um, Jesus always said, I always do the Father's will. Yeah, he not my will, but the Father's will. His, his own will, sort of human will, a weak will. Jesus always does so God's to be, divine will. So to be like Christ, to be like Jesus, is not to do your will, or not to do Jesus' will, but to do the Father's will. To They're submit the to the Father's will. But, 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 but Jesus' will and the Father's will are always the same. Because so if I say you, I want to yeah. follow Jesus, I'm actually following God the Father. So for example, in the Gospels it says, it's not Jesus' will that he should die, but it's the Father's will that he should drink from the cup. Uh, uh, no, Jesus says, I am so the Lamb Jesus. of God. It's a different world to the Father. No, no, Jesus says that he's the Lamb of... John the Baptist said he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yeah. But that's not Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, so then... That's said to be the Father's will. But Jesus said, I came to do thy will, O God. Yeah, to do the and, Father's will, not his will. And, but, but, he, but he always does that's God's will. your will, not my yeah. will be done. Because his will is always the same as God the Father. So it's they're never the they're never contradicted. But this is not my will, but no. your will. No, no, so there's, His, there's a difference. He was tempted in the Garden of Gethsemane to see is there any other way, apart from suffering the most humiliating death, that anyone could suffer bearing the sins of the world? Is there any other way? But he said, never I, I'll do my will. I'll do your will. It's not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. So they were, so were always be, the same. Yeah. They're always exactly the same. Not, Jesus never disobeyed God's the will. Same, but no, mostly the same. No, no, no. Jesus never disobeyed God. You can say 99%. No, Jesus, no, no. 100%. Jesus' will is always the same. 100%. But that one time, at least no. in the Gospels, Jesus had a different will to the Father. No, no. Because he said. It would be possible. Yeah, take so. Take this cup away. So it's like. So, it's but, will, but will so if it's possible, is there another way? So that's a simple question. Not, not just another way, but take this cup away from me. If it is possible, yeah. but there was no other way. Your will be done, not my but, will. But, but do you see what Jesus is agreeing to do? He's, he's agreeing to drink the cup of God's wrath. So all God's righteous anger against all the sin that's been committed in the world, Jesus takes it into himself. That is horrific. So the pure divine nature of Jesus has to, so to be, be treated like as, as, as a, to be treated as though he's the worst, most degraded sinner that there's ever been. So Jesus is says not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will be safe. Ah, so you're but quoting he Matthew does five. The will of the Father. Will so, be safe. so you're quoting Matthew five. I think it's Matthew seven. Matthew seven. I remember reading in Matthew seven. Yeah. Not everyone who says to me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these wonderful things? I'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Now that's very important. Go back to Philippians. Yeah, no, can I, can I stay on that? Before we go to Philippians. So in, jo in uh, uh, John 17, Jesus says, This is eternal life, that they know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Eternal life is knowing God. Jesus says, on that day, I will say to them, I never knew you. So that's the importance of a relationship with Jesus. If we have no relationship with Jesus, if we say, I'm going to keep you at arm's length, I don't you want you interfering with my life. Breakers, those people who break the, the Torah, or, or the normal. It's, it's he who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. So, um, I, I mean, Matthew 7. So Jesus is speaking about those people that break the Torah or those without the Torah, but he says, get away from me. No, 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 he says, um, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. He's not talking about the, the, the Torah. Well, he goes on to say, many will say to me on that day, did we not prophesy in your name? Yep. And do many mighty works, and then- And drive then out demons. Jesus will say, depart from me, um, you are workers, or you evildoers. Yep. If you look in the Greek, in the Greek it, it says, those without the Torah, or those without the law. Yeah, because, because but, but the, the, um, the, the important thing is, we you. must do the will of God the Father. So we pray the Lord's that Prayer. Matthew, yeah, exactly, the Lord's which Prayer. Which is, yeah. um, O Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. So if we say the Lord's Prayer, but don't do God's will, then no matter what good things we do, 
we're following our own will and not God's will, Jesus warns us that um, just because we say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean that we uh, uh, can go into heaven. And then you're going to quote Philippians 2. Well, I was going to show you Matthew 7, 22, um, where Jesus says, many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord. Um, and he is the judge. You agree he is the judge. Jesus separates the sheep from the goats. Yeah. And it's those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life can go into heaven. That's Revelation. Um, so, 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 so Jesus says basically in the Greek, uh, depart from me, the, those without the law. Or those without the, the Torah. So this is like an interlinean. Uh, but unfortunately they haven't like... Um, the part where Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Um, they haven't put that in the interlinean. But if you look up that, that phrase, um, you, you workers of iniquity, in the Greek, it means those without the law. And it's the same word that's used for the Torah, or the Mosaic law. Well, no, can, can we deal with Philippians Yeah, so two. going back to Philippians 2, when it says, um, every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and confess Jesus is Lord. Not to the glory of God, the, God Father. the Father. So it's, in Matthew, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord will be saved, but he who does the will That's of right. God will be saved. It's the will yeah. of the Father will yeah. be saved. So, so Jesus says, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that I am Lord. But not everyone goes to heaven. They'll confess Jesus is Lord when they see him in his glory at the end. But well, we've, well, let me finish, we've got to acknowledge Jesus as Lord in our life now. If we wait until we're, we're, we're dead and see Jesus face to face, we'll then say, he is Lord, he's Lord of Lords, King of Kings. But that's too late. We've got to confess him as Lord now in our life. So it's Jesus, Lord of my life. God is Lord of my life, not me. Yes, yeah, so, um, confessing Jesus as Lord means doing the will of the Father. But if you call Jesus Lord, but you don't do the will of the Father, then you will not be saved because yeah. the will of the Father is that you should have no other God before Him and you should not make any graven image of Him. Yep, um, and, and that's the Ten Commandments and, yeah. uh, and we agree. Not to bow down to any statue or idol. Um, so this would include not to say that God is a man because the man is some form of image ah. that you have in your mind. But so I, when you say Jesus, you're thinking of a man. No, I'm, I'm no, thinking no. of the opposite gender, for example. When, when I say I'm thinking Jesus, of with a beard, I'm not maybe. just thinking of a man. I'm thinking of Jesus, who's always been at the right hand of God the Father in heaven, who is God. John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. No one has ever seen God, the one and only Son who is himself God has made him known. When I think of Jesus, I think of God. I think of Jesus on earth as Jesus given a human body, but I don't think of Jesus as just being a man. Jesus is now in heaven at the right hand of God, where there's all glory and honour and power and worship, and every knee will worship before him. So that's who Jesus is. I mean, is there a verse that says that Jesus has always been at the right hand of God the Father, or was it something that he was made um, after his resurrection? He's given this exhortation. Well, he says in John 17, O Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world began. So Christians say that Jesus had glory, was given glory before anything was made. God had glory, but Jesus you know, had glory. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 also says the same thing about Christians as well. That before the world or before the ages began, uh, Christians had the glory or something to do So with which, which verse? 1 um, Timothy? 1. Oh, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9? Yeah. He saved us mm. and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So God's plan was before time began, he would create, that he would uh, create adopted sons of God, and be changed to be like him, that was always God's plan. Because you know, the, even the Bible, like in Isaiah, says that God created the heavens and the earth by myself. Like, there was no one with me when I made the heavens and the earth. And, and Jesus never attributes the creation to himself. Like, there's no verse in the New Testament that says 
that creation originates or comes from Jesus. At most, you may find some passages that say through Jesus, but never from Christ. So, yeah, created it's, through Jesus. That's what we it's believe. The Father who's the originator. And even when Jesus speaks about um, heaven and earth, or the, the creation of man and woman, um, he says God made them male, both, made them both male and female. Like in, he never says I made them. But, we in, made them. but in our image, Not in they, our image. Well, God made man in his own image. But the image of God is not one man. The image of God is male and female. So again, even there, you've got this strange concept that, that, that the perfect image of God is created in two beings who become so united in love that they are treated as one, one flesh. So two become one in that uh, a beautiful Jesus, way, in a Jesus human way. Jesus is also made in the image of God as well. Not, not so, made in the image of God. Um, so like where, where, where'd you get that from? Colossians, like he, he's the firstborn of all of God's creation. Ah, well, you need the exact, no, you need exactly the exact words, exact words. Philippians chapter. No, no, Co Colossians 1, 15. The exact words are very important. Does it refer to him as the image of God in Colossians? The Son is the image of the invisible God. Okay, yeah. The firstborn of all creation. So it refers to no, Jesus as no, the image. But the exact representation of his being. That's uh, uh, he Jesus Hebrews. Jesus is also made in the image of God as well. Yeah, but it's the exact representation of his being. So if you want to know what God is like, Jesus is the exact representation of his being. That's Hebrews so 1. If you have the exact words, God spoke to, to his Son, the Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Notice in Hebrews 1, 1 it says, previously God spoke to us in many ways. He spoke to us through the prophet. And then in his last days, he spoke to us through the Son. Whom he appointed heir of all things. So Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament, nor did he always exist. Ah, no. But it's only in the New Testament that God no, Jesus, Jesus, or sent Jesus. Jesus was in the Old Testament, because if you read Luke, Luke on the road to Emmaus spoke to uh, the, uh, 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 the, the two followers. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained what was said in all the scriptures, Hebrew scripture, Old Testament, concerning himself. Okay. So Jesus actually quoted, can I finish? Okay. Jesus quoted verses from the Hebrew scriptures saying this refers to me. So the Passover lamb, Jesus almost certainly would have said, I am the perfect Passover lamb, I'm the lamb of God. Isaiah 53, who is the one led like a lamb to the slaughter who bears the sins of, uh, of mankind? Jesus would have said, that is me. So I'm not saying Jesus is not mentioned or prophesied in the Old Testament. I'm just saying Jesus didn't consciously exist as a conscious being because Hebrews said, God spoke to us through the lips of prophets and now in these last days he spoke to us with Jesus. So even the New Testament is not teaching that Jesus always but only he was prophesied or in God's knowledge. Although knowledge. There, there's some reference to the angel of the Lord appearing to people. And uh, uh, Christians believe that uh, that angel of the Lord, when they saw the angel of the Lord, no one can see God, the same but they saw, can I finish? They saw someone who they call the angel of the Lord. It's a question of whether that might have been Jesus appearing to them and being able to speak to them before he was given a human body uh, 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 well, through, I mean, through the, Mary. The same angel also appears at Jesus' birth. Um, so the angel of the Lord also appears at Jesus' birth. Ah, oh, but that's like not the Matthew. angel of the Lord. It does say the, the angel of the Lord. Ah, oh, where, where's that? Um, in Matthew? Matthew one eighteen. Matthew one eighteen. So let's have the exact words. Um, this is how Jesus came about. His mother Mary was born and... Um, but after he considered this, an angel appeared to him. Oh, an angel of the Lord. So it's not the angel of the Lord. An angel of the Maybe Lord appeared to him. Maybe this is not the right verse. Um, and we know from Luke sorry. that God sent the angel Gabriel to speak to Mary. We know what the angel Gabriel said to Mary. Almost certainly because Luke spoke with so Mary. Even uh, at the resurrection, so if you go to like Matthew 
chapter 28. Yep. Uh, so you know the, the M22, the angel of the Lord appears to the women. Okay, so you you're one to translate as an angel. An angel. Yeah, so, an angel of the Lord. So in the ESV it has the angel of the Lord yeah. rather but, than an angel. But but this is just any any angel. This is not like the Old Testament where there was the special angel of the Lord who had a special message. This is just someone who appeared at the tomb of Jesus. And all the angel said was, um, don't be afraid. I know who you're looking for. Jesus who was crucified is not here, he's risen. So do you accept Jesus was crucified? Um, no, no. Uh, I accept that the, the, uh, the Bible, the New Testament does teach that. Jesus. And he has the marks of the crucifixion yeah. in his body. Um, and he said to um, Thomas, look, here are my hands and my feet. And he uh, uh, shows him the, the nail marks in his, uh, in his hands. Okay, so... Um, I beg your pardon, it says... Um, uh, which verse? An angel. Um, yeah, an saying, angel. The, yeah, that's fine. Angel. But for me it's the same because um, even in the Old Testament you have the angel of the Lord being used for others. Like, um, you know in the book of Hakka, I always have trouble... The book of... Uh, ha ha Hagar. Oh, Hagar. Yeah, ha Haggai. Ha ha Haggai, uh, chapter 1, verse 13. Um, he's referred to as the angel of the Lord. What I remember. Um, no, Haggai uh, 1 13. 13. No. Yeah, no. So it says um, the messenger of the Lord. But the, in, in the Haggai, Hebrew, the Lord's messenger. Yeah, but in the Hebrew it says um, angel. Um, yeah, but, 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 but we know Haggai was not an angel. Haggai was, yeah. was a man. But so, he's called the angel of the Lord as well. Yeah, but that's that's not um, not what I was referring to. So, um, and so you know, Hebrews actually denies that Jesus was an angel. Oh, yeah, he's greater than the angels. Yeah, so he's someone other than the angel, but he's then made lower than the angel. And in um, Hebrews, like chapter two, verse five, it says, "To none of the angels has God ever made the world which is to come." subjugated into him or to none of the angels did God ever say sit at my right hand and tell I make your enemies your footstool and then he says Jesus who was made lower than the angels for a little while is now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death only God is worthy of glory Jesus clearly here is given glory only only God is worthy of glory but some people believe Jesus was an angel but Hebrews yeah, just seems to be denying no, no. or correcting this like in Hebrews 2.5 um, To none of the angels did God yeah, it, uh, it is not to the angels that he subjected the world to come about which we are speaking And you know the importance of the blood of Christ in Hebrews Jesus entered the most holy place in heaven with his own blood obtaining eternal redemption How much more the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. This is so important, the blood of Jesus. That's why he shed his blood, because the blood of all innocent victims cries out for justice. From the blood of Abel, slain by, 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 by Cain, the blood shed today calls out to God for justice. But the blood of Jesus means we can be forgiven. He says, I bear the punishment that should have been given to those. The blood of Jesus, really important. The blood of the new covenant. What do you think of like the evolution of the four gospels? Like, um, like, so it starts with Mark, who uh, spoke with Peter. So, um, do you not think like, um, like even Jesus' pre-existence is something that is projected back? No, they're, 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 all, they're all the same message. So uh, Luke, quite clearly uh, says the angel who spoke to Mary said um, about Jesus, who he is, uh, uh, conceived by the Spirit of God, uh, uh, that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The Matthew, the, Most High. the Son of the Most High. The Most High is God. And called, Jesus. and called the Son of God. Or the Son of the Most High, does it say? But, no, sorry, but the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Most High, Okay. will overshadow you. The Holy One to be so born, which is born is will be called the Son of God. Only God is holy, 
So Jesus is holy from birth. Only God is most high as well. Yeah. And Jesus is never called most high. Well, but the is called the most high. Uh, I don't remember ever reading where Jesus is called most high. Well, he's, he's worthy of all worship in heaven. So uh, he's worshipped because he's the Lamb of God, not because of God. Whereas God is worshipped because he's God. The Book of Revelation. But you know, even so, 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 no, let, let, let me see where, 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 where you're, uh, you're looking at. Um, but then Jesus is, is, is the bride of, of, of the Lamb. So Jesus isn't just the Lamb of God sort of suffering. His, he, when when all, everyone in, is it, who's in heaven is in heaven, they'll be united as the bride of Christ. We'll have this intimate relationship with God himself. The church is the bride of Christ. That's really important. So, Naz, anything else, or do you think we've um, we, we've covered it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, yeah. we can speak again. Yeah. Yeah. No. Thank you so much. <laughs>